AccuWeather presents Tornado Stories, Path of Destruction. It's amazing, you know, the power of just air that moves fast enough can do this kind of thing. Although they typically only last minutes, tornadoes can have astonishingly destructive powers. Okay, that house is exploding. Jim Ledoux has seen it all. He's the acting director of the National Windstorm Impact Reduction Program. I've seen Chevy avalanches, uh, you know, basically twisted into almost a donut. Houses come apart, not only just come apart, but the debris winds up getting pulverized and turns into flying missiles. Then that basically attacks other homes nearby. It's no surprise that some tornadoes are capable of incredible damage. All the kitchen utensils basically impaled into the stucco, you know, knives, forks, everything else you can imagine. Oh my God. The strongest tornadoes with wind speeds of up to 300 miles per hour can also scour the ground. Maybe 100 feet by 40 feet of chunks of dirt down to a depth of a foot or more pulled out and then blown out and scattered. Mobile and manufactured homes often experience the worst damage during violent tornadoes. We often don't see anything except frames wrapped around stubs of trees. Ledoux says seeking safety as soon as possible is key to tornado survival. You don't want to get caught looking at something like that coming at you and wind up being immobilized like, oh, I just got another minute. I just got another second. It's like, no, they're on you before you even know it. And they will cause that kind of damage in less than a second. For AccuWeather, I'm Jeff Cornish. It's a new alley that's developing. And this new alley is a different type of alley. Over the last decade, tornado numbers in the central part of the United States, known as Tornado Alley, have decreased, while tornadoes in other areas have increased. We're seeing more frequency, more news, more stories, and, 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 and more destructive tornadoes in areas in the lower Mississippi, mid-Mississippi, Tennessee Valley and Gulf states in the southeast. Those areas are not as open as the farmlands of the plains. There's a lot more people east of the Mississippi than there is in the central plains. The region also has a greater number of mobile homes. About 54% of fatalities that occur in a home during a tornado happen in mobile and manufactured homes. However, those homes only make up 6% of the nation's homes, according to the National Weather Service. We have growing cities, growing vulnerability, and, you know, we worry about a lot of populations that aren't immune to this, like manufactured housing residents. To make matters worse, Strader says many people who live in manufactured housing often don't have the means to evacuate. People typically stay put and they do their best and they hope and they pray. When we think about this, there's a bit of a paradox. Those that don't need to flee their homes have the ability to flee and get to shelter. Those that do not have the means that need to flee their homes that's the problem they face. We're very quick to say, is this tornado the strongest ever? Is it the longest ever? Is it the most deadly? What is its rating? When I think more important and pressing questions are, okay, yes, we have tornadoes, but what are we doing in the things we can control? For AccuWeather, I'm meteorologist Tony Lawback. It's been a wild ride for storm chasers like Dr. Reed Timmer and Dr. Eric Rasmussen. Technology at the forefront of how they do their jobs. But it was a different story when they first started chasing. Actually, I had to get a library card at every single library across the Southern Plains and to find out where the storms were happening. For in the field, the only real technology was the AM radio. Dr. Rasmussen started chasing in a green Volkswagen Super Beetle when he got his driver's license at 16 years old and never looked back. I would just tune it to a, a blank spot on the dial where there was no broadcast and listen for the, the spherics, the noises that come from the lightning. Then I developed this thing that had a, a dryer hose, you know, for a clothes dryer aimed out the window to, to catch the air. It took it into a box. Today, Rasmussen is riding in style in souped up mobile mesonet trucks. He believes chasers have always been motivated to save lives. And as the science advances to do that, main power on, rockets down, cutting edge instruments are created. We're good. 
We recently in 2019 launched a miniaturized sensor just about that big into a tornado, the first one to ever get inside of a tornado. Dr. Timmer says social media has led to a big shift in the community. And almost now there's too much information coming in. You have the ability to do storm reports. Despite all the high tech gadgets and high speed data, doctors Timmer and Rasmussen both say their best tools never had to be invented. I try to use all my senses, my eyes. I try to listen for the tornado. What's still the best piece of technology we have. Violet tornado. For AccuWeather, I'm Jillian Angeline. That circulation looks like it's going to ride the southern line. All the hours watching forecasts and prepping gadgets lead up to moments like this for a tornado research team called Perils. We'll position along that road to try to intercept it. Perils stands for Propagation, Evolution and Rotation in Linear Storms. Their mission, hit the roads in the southeast to understand how the environment around a line of severe thunderstorms can produce deadly tornadoes like this one that destroyed Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Huge wedge due west of us, west southwest, whoa! Wide. Especially in the southeast United States, there are uh, lots of people that live in mobile homes. These events occur at night when people are more t uh, prone to being caught off guard. But the group isn't riding around in any old vehicle. This is a mesonet truck, basically a mobile weather station with all the bells and whistles on the observation deck up above. The PVC shield here is a radiation shield that's got our temperature and relative humidity sensors on there. Watt tells me it takes him about two weeks to set up this entire system from scratch in a new truck, but he's done it in as fast as 24 hours. I like dents. Dents are like trophies to me. You know, they tell stories, but when you're losing your windshield every single day, it gets really expensive and it takes the vehicle out of commission. So this hail cage serves to protect that windshield by protecting it from those elements. We recently got a chance to hop into this special truck for a night long chase across Arkansas this season, watching as two trucks worked together to intercept a tornado worn storm. Once the circulation crossed the highway, we drove back in behind it. And so we have a complete circle of observations. The team says they hope their work helps forecasters and saves lives. For AccuWeather, I'm Jillian Angeline. Seven o'clock this morning. That's when we got up and got the car loaded up and we began our 300 mile drive to Eastern Iowa where we've stopped to get gassed up, we've gotten fooded up, we've got the windshield cleaned up, the car's all set up, ready to rock and roll. The National Weather Service has issued tornado warnings effective until 9 p.m. Central Time. We are seeing more development further to the south and west. Near Otumwa, Iowa, uh, we have our own Tony Law back. We're gonna take you to radar, we're gonna zoom in right away here because we wanna show you what we're looking at coming at us here. But we're watching multiple storms right now, especially the one just to the south of the Missouri Iowa border. This one going to be moving up into the uh, Ottumwa area, likely in the next hour to hour and a half. Guys, we've got a tornado on the ground near Ottumwa, north of Ottumwa. Tornado developing as we speak. This is now a confirmed tornado warning, probably from uh, Tony. Seeing it there on the ground. It's right in front of us, dude. It's crossing the road right now. This is a very large tornado. This is northeast of Ottumwa, Iowa, an extremely large tornado. This is on the ground. You were seeing this live, folks. We've been following that storm uh, for a while here on the AccuWeather Network. Perfect visibility here. Yeah. So once we lost sight of the tornado, we actually followed that storm well into the evening, shooting lightning till almost midnight, but we finally made it back to the hotel. So we're going to get the car unloaded, get ourselves into the room for the night, and we'll, uh, we'll see what we wake up to in the morning. One of the most memorable storm chases of my career took place on June 16, 2014 here in northeast Nebraska. And as we approached this intersection near the town of Pilger, we had two EF4 tornadoes on the ground on either side of the highway as we were driving east. Those were two of the six tornadoes we witnessed that day, four of which were EF4s on one of the most intense storm chases of my career. My most memorable chase was when I took my daughter out for her very first storm chase. On April 14th, 2012, we witnessed the Langley and Solomon, Kansas tornadoes. It was a great experience for her and one that we will share this memory for a lifetime.
My most memorable storm chase was when I nailed the tornado forecast outside the main risk area in Kansas on May 28th, 2019. I saw tornadoes of all shapes and sizes dancing across beautiful green fields with blue skies all around the storm and even a rainbow behind a tornado to cap it all off. Did you know the strongest tornadoes have rotating winds of more than 300 miles per hour near the ground? TVs, phones, radios, and community tornado sirens all play a big role in delivering severe weather warnings that could save lives when a tornado is on the ground. Thank God the weather people had us alerted full time. Uh, I couldn't believe how fast it was. It was unbelievable. It's a tense, intense tornado. Getting the word out is only half the battle because the contents of that severe weather alert could be the difference between life and death. We need to make sure the language is urgent and helps convey succinctly the immediate tornado and severe weather risk to people in a particular area so that they make the very best decisions. People ignore or respond to severe weather alerts differently for a myriad of reasons, from where they live and their experiences with storms to shelter options available. This is the first time in my life I took shelter. It was frightening because being in a disaster like that, you just never know what can go wrong. Use all the advance notice that you have to get right to safe shelter. Dozens of studies over decades show people spend precious time looking for more information if warnings are confusing or short on detail. That's why Porter says AccuWeather is continually working to improve the messaging around severe weather alerts. Putting detail into our AccuWeather app talking about things like a significant risk for damaging winds and tornadoes. Providing people with all the information they need to make quick decisions before it's too late. It was all stuff. It was just stuff. I mean, it was. I mean, we had a lot of stuff, but uh, we, we, Pam and I are still alive. Reporting for AccuWeather, I'm Lincoln Riddle. From basements. This is not completely underground, but this is. And I got right there under that door. To storm shelters. I closed my eyes and grabbed a hold of my husband, and I started screaming and hollering. And interior rooms. We ended up over in the back corner under all that. And if we wouldn't have been in the closet, we wouldn't be here right now. Every situation and survival story is different. Some people were caught driving in the path of a tornado. Oh, my wood is exploding. Tree come around, hit the truck. The truck's on his roof. Climb out, it's calm. Ain't no rain, ain't no wind, ain't no, I mean, it's just total silence. Others followed the forecast and warnings closely and did everything they could to keep their children calm and safe. The kids just kept saying that they wanted to be done. Everybody was safe. That's the main thing. Everybody got out okay. It's just devastating. Uh, the auntie had her in our bedroom. Somehow they got out of the debris. Some people turned to faith in the darkest moments. It was like a force of God. You know, the same force that came through here is the same force that, that got me out. Many of the families hit hardest by the spring severe weather outbreaks are now dealing with uncertainty. Can they afford to rebuild? Where will they work? And how will they get around? Some are now dealing with survivor's guilt and post-traumatic stress disorder. That everybody here that I love is okay, but devastated also, because we've lost it all. Some people may move away, but many others will stay, working to rebuild their communities one day at a time. For AccuWeather, I'm Bill Waddell, Even after the tornado passes, you're not out of the woods just yet. More storms could be on the way. That's why it's crucial to stay updated on current weather conditions by tuning into your television, NOAA weather radio, or even your phone by downloading the AccuWeather app.
Check for injuries and have a first aid kit ready for anyone who is sheltered in place with you, friends, family, even pets. If there are severe or life-threatening injuries, seek immediate medical attention and call 911. If the building you're sheltered in sustained severe damage, practice extreme caution when stepping outside. Injuries can occur from falling objects and stepping on debris like broken glass or exposed nails. Watch your step as downed power lines can lead to electrocution, fire, and there is a risk of explosion as well. Be careful of lightning that could still strike from storms nearby. If your property is lost or damaged, keep records and notes of the damage inflicted. Review your insurance policy in case you need to file a claim. Once you're finally in the clear and it's safe enough to clean up, wear sturdy shoes and clothing and use the right safety gear. For more safety and preparedness tips and tools, visit AccuWeather.com ready. Within 12 to 48 hours of a tornado touching down, meteorologists travel to the damage zone on a mission to get answers. I've seen a lot of destroyed structures. I've seen a lot of destroyed mobile homes, manufacturing homes. Brad Bryant leads the team at the National Weather Service in Shreveport, Louisiana, issuing tornado warnings as storms move in, then surveying the damage after the threat clears. These are well-built structures, and um, you know when you start tearing off uh, the, the roof and taking down parts of walls, you're, you're definitely into the EF2 category at least. Armed with tablets and a keen eye, meteorologists focus on the types of anchor bolts, reinforcements, and construction methods used in buildings that were damaged to determine the wind speed. You look at some of the roof structure and how the roof's attached uh, to kind of make some adjustments to what the default rating for a roof rip, ripped off will give you. The worst damage found is used to determine the tornado rating. The enhanced Fujita scale is an estimate of wind speeds from 65 mile an hour weak spin-up twisters to monster EF5 tornadoes, packing winds over 200 miles an hour. The last EF5 to hit the U.S. was the massive tornado that ripped through Moore, Oklahoma in May 2013. Neighborhoods were leveled, some buildings shredded apart leaving behind just a concrete slab. It can take hours or days to document the damage path and interview witnesses. It's just a lot of damage to go through and make sure we're right about the assessments. These surveys help meteorologists learn more about tornado threats in different regions and help architects and contractors build better, stronger homes and businesses for the future. For AccuWeather, I'm Bill Waddell, did you know Texas is the most active state for tornadoes, averaging 130 a year? One of the first ever tornadoes that I saw was May 3rd, 1999. I was a freshman here at the University of Oklahoma, and that was an F5 tornado. And to this day, it's well known as one of the strongest tornadoes to ever be recorded in history. Look at the beauty, man. Number four is likely the Manchester, South Dakota F4 wedge. It was in 2003. It was just a, a breathtaking tornado. It was powerful. It was illuminated by the sun back behind it, turning the whole entire tornado bright orange in color. Produced about eight to 10 tornadoes in a single day. So still, I would say that's probably the most efficient tornado producing storm that I've ever chased. Number three, I would say is the most powerful tornado that I've ever seen in my 25 year storm chasing career. And that's the Philadelphia, Mississippi EF5 tornado during the super outbreak of April 27, 2011. The most prolific tornado outbreak in recorded history. Number two, I have to go with June 17, 2009, and that was, with the, that was the second highest wind speed that we've ever recorded with the Dominator at 138.8 miles an hour. Blew out my side mirror, uh, shards of glass hit me in the face, but at that time I knew we survived the tornado. The number one most memorable tornado intercept that I ever had was actually a couple days before the legendary El Reno, Oklahoma tornado near Bennington, Kansas was probably the most powerful, most intimidating tornado that I've ever chased. And I thought the tornado was gonna envelop us as we were on foot. I'm honestly just lucky that we survived that tornado. Oh, no! 